you can stay in a two bedroom suite at Universal for less than you'd pay for a regular hotel room at Disney World's cheapest resort. Yes, really. Let's check out Universal's endless summer dockside resort. I spend a lot of time staying at Disney World hotels. In fact, I've stayed at every single one, but this is my first ever stay at a Universal hotel. And I'm excited to compare them, especially considering what I already know is a big price difference. Universal's Endless Summer Resort Dockside Inn is one of two value hotels at Universal Orlando. Universal Orlando has eight hotels in total, and in the value category is this hotel and its sister hotel right across the street, Universal's Endless Summer Resort Surfside Inn. Dockside has a theme that blends the coastal vibe of escaping to the perfect sunset with the cool calm feeling of a beach retreat so think beach retreat beach house vibes uh, lots of you know driftwood colors beach colors you get it this resort offers both standard hotel rooms and two bedroom family suites for a fraction of the price you will pay for most hotel rooms in disney world I'm super excited for our stay. And of course, we've got to start with check-in. Now, Universal Orlando Resort does offer mobile check-in. About 24 hours prior to your reservation, you will receive an email with a link to do this. Uh, but you can also check in the standard way at the front desk, which is actually how I'm going to check in today. The check-in desks are very easy to find. They're right in the right inside the lobby as soon as you walk in under the dockside sign. Uh, there are team members here who would be happy to check you in. And you can check in any time on your check-in day, but your room is not guaranteed to be ready until 4 p.m. I went ahead and went up and checked in. My room is not ready yet, so uh, we're just gonna have to wait a little bit for that. But it's super easy to check in. Obviously, gave them all my information, put a card on file for incidentals, and then she gave me a lot of information about the hotel, gave me a map, talked me through some stuff, and let me know that when my room is ready, I will get a text to let me know. So I'll just get a text on my phone. She went ahead and gave me room keys, and they'll be active as soon as I know what room is mine. If you do arrive early, like I did today, you can drop off any bags you might have over here at the luggage services counter. Uh, this is Bell Services. They are happy to take your bags for you. They'll give you a little slip to come pick up your bag when you're ready, and uh, it's pretty easy. But that's great because if you do arrive early, you're gonna wanna fill that time until 4 p.m. So whether that's heading to City Walk or the Universal Parks or even Volcano Bay, uh, might be a good idea to go ahead and leave those heavy suitcases behind with luggage services. I am gonna go ahead and wait for my room to be ready, but lucky for you, you don't have to wait with me through the powers of movie magic. So what could be forever for me, is only gonna be seconds for you, ready? Ah, see, look at that. The room is ready and you didn't even have to wait. This hotel does have two towers. There's one on the left and one on the right. Uh, tower one's on the left, tower two on the right. So we're headed over to tower one, we're on floor nine. We're gonna check out this room. I'm pretty excited, we do have a family suite. All right, tower one has 14 floors. We are on floor nine. You can see we're pretty high up. Okay, they made it. The first time I wanted to glance out at our view. We've actually got a view of, you can see Volcano Bay over there. That's in the summer surf side. And yeah, this is actually the view that faces Universal property, more or less, and heads a little towards I Drive, but uh, not too shabby. This isn't the room view, obviously. I'm still in the hallway. Let's go check out the room though, because it is right here. All right, so you will have a physical room key when you check in, which I have right here. And it has Spider Man on it. All right. <gasps> Ooh! Wow, so big. All right, we are in a pool view room, but I want to show you something. There's actually something even better than just being pool view. So obviously, you can see down to the pool, which is pretty awesome, better than parking lot. But also, we have a really picture-perfect view right over there of the theme parks. I can see Riptide Rocket, Doctor Doom's Fearful. I can see Hulk, Velocicoaster. I can even see Hogwarts from here, which is just so cool. Um, I wasn't expecting to be able to see the theme pranks as well, so that's really, really awesome. Uh, just a cool room. I am still absolutely flabbergasted by what this costs, especially now that I'm in here, but let's take a look around and talk a little bit about how much it costs because, wow, it's really cool. <laughs> All right, so to start, I'm going to do a little walkthrough just so you get a sense of how the space works. So I'm standing at the door right now, and right when you walk in the door, there's a mirror. So when you first enter, you come into the main space, which has two of the queen beds. Uh, those are in the main space. This looks a lot more like a standard hotel room, just this part, but there's a lot more hotel room to see, which is what makes this more of a family suite, more special. A little bit of storage, nice view outside. Then behind me, we have our kitchenette, which has, you know, microwave, fridge and stuff will look a little more in depth. And then a nice picnic table to eat. Coming this way, you've got your bathroom with the vanity being exterior. And then you have the second bedroom, which is the bedroom that has one single queen bed. So parents' bedroom, you know how it is. Um, and this one is sort of separated, has a little closet hutch. 
Uh, but that's the layout of the room. So it's definitely on the smaller side as family suites go, but on the large, 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 large side for hotel rooms that you can get that are this large at this price point. So this is one of the two bedroom family suites. This hotel also offers standard hotel rooms. And I think what's truly gonna shock you about this room is the price. I am currently hosted by Universal, so thank you Universal for having me, but I'm really excited to show you just how much space you get uh, for how little money. All right, so let's check out the room. You got your standard hotel room door, exit routes, your do not disturb sign if you need it to hang outside. This is like a Disney cruise. You actually need your room key in the door to turn the power on. You can also use any cards. So if you have like some loyalty card or something, you can pop it in there. It makes it easier to remember your room key, but that's so that the lights stay on. There's also this nice full bottom mirror here with lots of hooks. So you can see me do this. Four hooks here, there's a long board. Uh, which is interesting because uh, at Dockside, there are over 2,000 longboards represented throughout the hotel, which is pretty wild. Here's one of them. Then in our main space, like I mentioned, we've got two queen beds in here and they have fun decorative pillows. I actually really like when hotels have decorative pillows. I just feel like it makes it feel more homey. Each bed has a light above it controlled with this. Pretty bright though, so it would disturb the other group or person in the other bed, just something to note. So bring a reading light if you wanna read past other people being awake, these like wooden surf prints above the beds, of course, to add to the whole beach theme. Between the beds, there's a solid amount of space here and we've got this side table. Now this is not a storage unit, as I was kind of disappointed by this. Either that or I can't figure it out, but I'm pretty positive it's not openable at all. So um, just a nice like trunk as a side table. You've got your remote for the TV that's in here directly across and you have an alarm clock, something you don't see at Disney is an alarm clock. They do have those here. A wall outlet that does have a USB port as well, as well as a micro USB, which is really awesome. And there's some hand sanitizer in here. And then we go over to the window and we've got our view where you look out on, like we saw the pool, the splash pad, the rest of the hotel or the rest of Tower One anyway, and all the way over to the theme parks, which you can see just over there. I just saw Rick Ride Rocket go. Right here, we have a thermostat that is adjustable. That's actually the same thermostat they have at Disney, I think. Um, some little lights here by the TV if you need some more light. Under the TV, we have this kind of little bar with a few hooks under it. Very few drawers in this room, but here are some of them. Uh, they are pretty wide, not super deep, but probably enough space. If you're gonna really max out and have six people in this room, you might be a little pressed for storage space, but the beds do have under storage space. So there's space under the beds. There's also a lot of floor space in here just in general. So I think it would be okay. On the dresser, we have another set of like outlets with the USB and the micro USB. We have our phone, uh, the rundown, which is all the good to know info you'll need about staying at Dockside. And then the little handout for in-room pizza delivery, which spoiler alert, we are gonna try out tonight. Then you've got this surfing print here in the dresser. And that's pretty much it for the like main sleeping room. Then we've got our kitchenette and eating area. I absolutely love this picnic table. It is so cute. It's plenty of space for, I would say all six people to eat maybe a little uncomfortably and certainly four to five people to eat comfortably. There's a bench on this side, two chairs on that side and there's a poof. And there's actually another poof in the bedroom if you wanted to use it. Then we've got another surfing print here, as well as some, uh, what is this, plastic dishware, your ice bucket here, which is plastic, um, and a little tray. Good amount of shelving here, which is great for if you're keeping like snacks or food in the room. We've got our microwave. Uh, most Disney hotels do not have microwaves, so this is a big, big bonus here. A little in-room sink as well. And then our coffee maker complete with some coffee cups. Uh, under this countertop, you can find this drawer that does have some disposable silverware, some Cuisinart coffee for your coffee maker and some condiments, which, you know, stuff that you might need for your coffee, sugar and uh, powdered creamer. There's more shelving under here. So more space to store any food or kitchenette items you might have. And then a pretty sizable mini fridge here. I would actually say that this is, um, a very solid size mini fridge. So even if you're staying for a bit, you'll have room for any leftovers, any microwave meals, anything they might wanna keep in here. And drinks, of course. Then we make our way to sort of the bathroom section of the room. Trash can here on the left for the kitchen and bathroom area. Big get ready mirror where you can see me do this. 
Uh, they do not have makeup mirrors here, so we can't see my face zoomed in really funny, which is a bit of a bummer, but I don't even actually use those, so not a big deal. Uh, we have a double vanity here. I think with six adults getting ready in here, you might be a little pressed for space, but two people could probably get ready in this vanity at the same time, and then one person can maybe use this mirror. Otherwise, might want to do a little bit of a rotating situation. Uh, you've got tissue here, as well as your gentle face soap on the vanity. Your hair dryer is one of those wall hair dryers, mini wall hair dryers, which is great. And then a lot more shelving here as well, so you could keep your bathroom amenities and stuff here uh, with plenty of towels, hand towels, and washcloth. There is only one bathroom in this room. Uh, it's off to the side of the little vanity area. It does have your commode separated from the vanity, so if someone's getting ready, it doesn't obstruct someone from taking a shower or using the bathroom. However, two people cannot use the bathroom and take a shower at the same time. The door does lock. Well, they can. You know, if you're comfortable with that, you can. Um, the door does lock. I uh, got toilet paper, trash can, extra toilet paper. Then we have our shower, which this is a very standard hotel shower. I feel like this is like standard hotel curtain. You know what I mean? Uh, got your bath mat here. A uh, smaller tub. It's not like super big, but it's, you know, standard size tub. And then uh, you've got your cleansing bath bar, renewing shampoo, and hydrating conditioner. Um, I have never used Universal's Surf and Sand collection, so I will give those a try and let you know tomorrow how I feel about them. I'll shower in the morning. And then we've got our shower head here. Let's check out the pressure. Okay, yeah. This is really good pressure, actually. Way good for a hotel. I mean, it's nothing like, nothing like crazy good compared to like really good shower pressure at home, but for a hotel, I'm pretty impressed actually with that. Then across the way here, we have the main bedroom, or I guess this is the secondary bedroom. I don't know. This is the bedroom that is private with just one bed in it. So parents' bedroom, whatever. Uh, we've got another queen bed in here. And in this room, we have two side sort of caddy things um, that are mounted on the wall that have these little lights that are nice. And then USB ports directly in them, as well as the remote for the separate TV that's in here. So grownups and kiddos can watch two different shows. Or, you know, if all six adults are here, four adults can watch one show, two adults can watch another. We've got another of these little like bars that has hooks under it, which is great. Um, another charging port. This is probably where I'll charge like my uh, portable charger and things like that. Here's the other poof I mentioned. And there is a trash can in this bedroom as well. And a second window where you get your whole view. Now both windows do offer both privacy curtains and behind the privacy curtains are the blackout curtains. So if you need that midday nap desperately, go ahead and grab one of those every 10 minute buses back to endless summer and to catch, a, catch some Z's. Above the bed, we do have this surfer print. I will say only two pillows on each bed or two actual bed pillows. There are the decorative pillows out here. I know for me, I will be putting all six of these pillows on the main bed in there. I was hoping Emma would be able to stay with me, but the filming schedule didn't work out that way. So pillow nest it is. And the only real closet space of the room is located in here as well. So you've got this little hutch that has a curtain in front of it. Behind the curtain, you'll find all of my things. So my things are in the closet to get out of my way, but we have also the luggage rack, ironing board. We have coat hangers. There's an iron here, um, as well as a spare pillow if you need it. And I did bring Percy Jackson. And that is an overview of a two bedroom family suite here. Ton of space, um, maybe not the most storage, but I'm actually pretty impressed with this room in general. It's also got like a nice beachy theme. So if that's your vibe, I think you'll appreciate that. But of course, no room tour is complete until we do triple beach bed science with Quincy. All right, let's do it. I'm gonna try out the sand bed first. Ready? Huh. Oh. Okay, I'm gonna say my commentary till the end. Breeze bed. Huh. Oh. And supper bed. Huh. Oh. Okay, all the beds are the same. Um, I'm actually pretty happy with them. I, I don't know what I was expecting. They look visually kind of cheap. You can definitely feel the structure of the mattress. They don't feel cheap though. They feel um, pretty supportive. Honestly, it's coming up to meet my back. It's a mix of soft and firm, sort of like Disney's where it'll please more people. Honestly, I don't know if I'm just like a hater, but I was expecting it to be worse. Um, it's just cause it's hard to believe that there's a room this big. <laughs> and a hotel with these amenities for the price that you pay, which we'll talk about in just a second, but gotta test the pillows first. Okay, these are firmer than Disney's. There's a lot more support to them, which I know Disney's are too soft for a lot of people. So I'm a soft pillow gal. Disney pillows are like my favorite. These are just a tad firmer. 
I would say these are closer to being in the middle between soft and firm. They provide more neck and head support while still being very plush. I think this is more of a crowd pleaser pillow for sure. All right, we've seen the rune. We've done our bed science. Let's talk a little bit about price. As you can probably tell, these rooms do sleep six. They are 440 square feet, which is fairly large. And the price is pretty awesome. So the standard rooms at this hotel, not the suites, the regular two queen bedrooms, do run between $96 a night and $324 a night. For reference, $96 is how much it costs base to camp at Disney World for a campsite. So much cheaper than Disney World. The actual suites like the one we're in right now um, do cost between $144 per night and $304 per night. For reference, the cheapest family suites in Disney World are at All Star Music. And I like those probably just as much as I like these, but those start at $323 per night. So at base, Disney's cheapest family suites are $20 more expensive than the most expensive that these suites get in 2023. For reference, standard rooms at All Star Music are going for about $150 uh, in April, which is how much you could pay to have an entire six person family suite here. So the All Stars are the cheapest hotels at Disney World. These are of course the cheapest hotels here at Universal, but it's just really impressive to me that you can get this much space uh, and get those theme park perks and still only be paying the amount that you might pay for a regular hotel room at Disney World or, you know, much, much less than a family suite at Disney World, even a cheap family suite. That's not even counting like the more expensive hotels. But enough about the room. We've got resort to see, so I will see you back downstairs to do a nice tour of the hotel. We are going to start our resort tour as any good resort tour starts in the front lobby. As I mentioned when we got here, the front desk is going to be to your right along this green wall. Uh, over here you've also got your luggage services that I pointed out and this vacation planning center, which is a great place to stop if you need to buy Universal tickets so you don't have to stop right at the park gates. The Universal Planning Center can also help you with any questions you might have about the parks or city walk. Ask in the front desk. The front desk, think more geared towards hotel, planning center, more geared towards parks. But if you need help, someone at one of those two desks can help you. Just as a note, when you're headed to any Universal hotel, you can look into booking the Universal Superstar Shuttle. This is an airport shuttle that will take you to and from the airport to your Universal hotel. It does cost an additional fee, unlike what used to be the Magical Express at Disney, but just something to look into if you're coming from the airport. It might be a little bit easier than booking a different kind of shuttle or booking an Uber. Also in the lobby is a pretty sizable Universal Studios store. This is great because it's going to have a lot of the merchandise that you can find around the parks, as well as some you know necessities and things like that there's a pretty sizable harry potter section here so if you miss out on something you wanted to buy in the park you might be able to find it in here they even have wands oh my gosh you know how busy the wand stores are and i can just walk right up and look at them this is amazing oh, i was jenny's now oh, no wonder i want it we look alike beyond the wizarding world of harry potter merch there's also a lot of standard universal merch so if you want like an easy souvenir tea or you need an extra bag for the parts actually i really like this then they've got more of the collections like uh, Dr. Seuss merchandise, Simpsons merchandise, Minions merchandise, even E.T. Jurassic World. I do like this Jurassic World collection. Do I need this dinosaur fanny pack? And there is actually some unique Endless Summer merchandise, which is really awesome. Sometimes value resorts over in Disney World have more limited options as merchandise go, but there's some really fun Endless Summer stuff. I actually really like this tank top here. There's picture frames where you could frame a picture from your trip. All sorts of like mugs and cups and even a multi-purpose headband for endless summer, keychains, ornaments, socks, and towels. Um, all sorts of little fun souvenirs that you can get branded with endless summer. There's also a lot of like vacation clothes, swimsuits, and things like that. So if you forgot something, you might want to swing by the Universal Studios store to see if they have some pizza socks. And they also have some essentials, sunscreen, medicines, and things like that. So anything you forgot, go ahead and check in the Universal Studios store and you might be able to grab something uh, just a heads up that typically medicine and stuff is going to be more expensive in your hotel store than it would be at like a Walgreens. Uh, so it's best to remember to pack it or if you have your car to run to a real Walgreens, but it's great in a pinch. One thing I absolutely love about Dockside Inn is that there is a Starbucks in the lobby. So there is a full Starbucks literally right off the lobby, complete with its own bar seating right here. Um, this is absolutely amazing to me because at Value Disney Hotels, you're hard pressed to find a good cup of coffee, let alone a whole coffee shop. And at most Disney hotels, actually all Disney hotels, they don't have like Joffrey's or Starbucks in the hotel. Certain coffee shops will offer Joffrey's, that kind of thing. 
Um, so this is really, really cool to me that there is just a full Starbucks. I'm a Starbucks girl. I love having a coffee before heading to the parks. And I think this is great to be able to grab a coffee, sip it as you wait and get on the bus to head over to City Walk. Absolutely awesome. I will 100% be doing that tomorrow morning. Now, if you go to the right towards Tower 2, there are two towers where all the rooms are. We're headed towards Tower 2 right now. Um, you will find the car rental desk. So if you have any car rental needs, it's kind of tucked around this corner is where you're gonna look for it. This hotel and Surfside have very similar vibes, uh, but Surfside's more blue and this one's more orange. So that helps sway your decision. Um, Dockside is also a bigger hotel. I really like these driftwood pillars. They're really cool. The other way in the lobby building heading towards Tower One, you'll find uh, a little airport check-in kiosk that is currently unavailable, but it is there. Uh, restrooms and ATM if you need it. And then Pier 8 Market, which is uh, the restaurant here at Dockside Inn. Pier 8 Market is open from early morning till pretty late at 9, 11 p.m. and it serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner. More of a casual food court kind of vibe with five unique stations, including a self-serve salad bar. This station has chicken and waffles. There's a pizza station, burgers and sandwiches station, hot sandwiches station, and that build your own salad bar. I'm like pumped about a build your own salad bar. I feel for a salad. Maybe I'll get a salad. There's also a pretty extensive pastry and grab and go section with a lot of sweets and treats to try. Mango cheesecake. That sounds good. And some really fun cupcakes too. Beyond that, there are grab and go selections, which might be easy. What? A Greek yogurt plate. Some grab and go sandwiches and salads to take up to your room, drinks and things like that. Um, and they even have gluten-free and allergy selections as well. And fresh fruit. Really the whole shebang here. You can also buy like bottles of wine if you want to take one up to your room and things like that. Now I will say with some grab and go stuff like this, same thing as the essentials in the gift shop, this stuff is gonna be a lot more expensive here at Universal than it would be at the grocery store in advance. So if you have the space to bring along some snacks and you know you're gonna want some snacks in your room, you might wanna buy those in advance. Um, got lots of options to try, but tons of seating, lots of options. So hopefully enough good offerings for you. Right to the left as you enter the lobby, there is a lounge. This is Sunset Lounge. Um, it is a bar that's open daily, serving cocktails and refreshing beverages. Uh, it's not open quite yet today. It's more open in afternoon and evening hours, open till midnight. So we're definitely gonna give that a try a little later, but for now, uh, let's head outside. All right, so right here under the park of share, that's where you'll get dropped off uh, if you are coming in uh, or unloading your luggage or anything like that. And then right to the right outside the lobby, you'll find the shuttle buses. There are only two different bus routes to worry about. There's one bus that heads to Volcano Bay and one bus that heads to Universal City Walk. Universal City Walk is going to be the bus you'll take to get to either Universal Studios or Universal Islands of Adventure or City Walk, of course. Um, and Volcano Bay, that bus will just take you over to Volcano Bay. Also directly in front of the hotel is check-in parking. It's a very small lot, you'll notice. And that's because most of the parking for this resort is in a a parking garage immediately behind the hotel. Parking is gonna be $15 per night per vehicle when you stay here. And there actually is some limited parking out front of the two different towers. Uh, same thing, that's gonna be $15 per vehicle per night. Uh, you will get asked if you are parking a vehicle when you arrive and they'll go ahead and get your parking all set up with your room. Uh, when you check in. Something that I really like about Endless Summer Dockside and a reason that you can tell that this is definitely a newer hotel is there is actually a little circle up here in the back of the front of the hotel, the back of the front, you get what I mean, closest to the road, that is ride out pickup. So if you are getting picked up or dropped off at Endless Summer, there is a dedicated parking circle where ride out drivers, Lyft drivers, Uber drivers can stop to drop you off or pick you up. All right, that takes us through everything in the main like center lobby building. So let's head into the towers. The way that Dockside Inn is laid out is with that lobby building in the center and the two towers on either side. Tower one is gonna be on the left of the lobby building and tower two is gonna be on the right. One thing to know as we head on over is that you can set up resort-wide charging privileges to your room key when you check in, if you would like to do that. Um, the team member will certainly ask you, but you can also just ask. As we head into the tower one, you'll find the elevators here. It's also where you'll find ice 
and vending for the tower is going to be by the elevators. But heading down this hallway on the first floor is also where you'll find the fitness center. The fitness center has relatively small, but it has some weight training equipment as well as some treadmill and cardio equipment. Now this is a very big hotel, so you can expect crowds. However, it does come with a very big restaurant, two huge pools outdoor with a ton of patio space, two different pool bars, and the buses come every 10 to 15 minutes. So even if there's a backup on the buses, you're only waiting 10 minutes for the next one. You can see that the towers are U-shaped. They do surround the pool areas on either side. This is Tower 1's pool area. Uh, as a note, both towers do have guest laundry. Those can be found on floors 3, 6, and 9. And they're pretty nice pools. They're large pools. They are heated. So even on a day that's a little cooler like today, the pools are still heated to be above 80 degrees-ish. Um, there are sand beaches on the patios as well as just plain pavement on the patios. Uh, these really nice like comfy beach chairs that are adjustable. Something I hate about a lot of Disney pool pit chairs is that they are not adjustable. They're only laying down or sitting up. There is no one between and I like a, I like a lounge moment, you know? You do have to be a guest of the hotel to use the pools, of course, um, but there are towels for your use, swim diapers if you're traveling with babies and need them. And keep an eye out because there may be poolside activities during the day. I don't see any happening right now, but there could be some. By Tower 1, you'll find the Oasis Beach Bar. Uh, this is a pretty solid bar. It's got a ton of outdoor lounge seating, um, and it's a full bar, so they've got different like poolside cocktails and things you can grab. Expect like cocktails, frozen drinks, wine, beer, smoothies, that kind of thing, anything you might need. Now I will note that there is no food at this pool bar, so if you want food, you're gonna head into Pier 8 to grab something to bring out here. Your kids might enjoy this splash pad that's here as well, uh, which is awesome, and there is a dedicated seating area for if your kiddos are going crazy in the splash pad. Also some ping pong tables and things like that. Now one thing I will say, this pool does not have any slides, so if your kid is like, used to a slide, really wants a slide when they're on vacation, then they're not gonna get that here at this hotel. But otherwise, I don't know. It's a huge pool. Uh, it's not very crowded today and very relaxing vibes. I honestly might come sit out here uh, or around the other pool. Now, time to cross back over to Tower 2. Tower 2 is gonna be more or less a mirror image to Tower 1, except instead of a fitness center on this side, they have a game room. It's not a bad size arcade, and they've got some pretty big, fun games in here. Of course, it makes sense for them to have a Jurassic World game. I personally am a Pac-Man fan, specifically Miss Pac-Man. Uh, I'm pretty darn good at it, so. Uh, but yeah, sizable arcade in here. Really great option for, you know, if you're hanging out at the hotel, or your kids need a little something to kill some energy. Cut to win. Never in my life have I seen something like this. How do you cut it? With the scissors? And continuing on, we've got the other pool. And you can see that this pool, just as big, just as vibey. The same amenities as the other pool. This is really awesome because if one pool is too busy, you can head to the other. Uh, both pools also have zero entry, which is awesome. And this pool has a bar of its own with the Wave Makers pool bar. Same deal over here. Beer, wine, cocktails, frozen drinks. Um, and it's a little gloomy outside, but I say we relax with a cocktail. After all, we've seen the whole hotel. I mean, we haven't seen it all. There's obviously a ton of rooms. Uh, but that is dockside, so you can kind of get a sense of the amenities. Nothing too crazy, nothing too big, um, but a lot of awesome amenities, and I think it's about time we try some of them out. Required a beach chair, and honestly, the vibes are immaculate. Um, I did get a drink from Wave Makers. I went with literally the first one on the menu because I figured that that would be pretty signature. All right, so here's the drink I got. This is the Surf Rider. Uh, it's one of their On the Rocks cocktails. It's got Castillo Silver Rum and Blackberry Brandy blended with sweet banana, pineapple, and orgia for a hint of almond. So, a kind of a tiki drink vibe. Cheers. Oh my gosh. I wasn't expecting to like this that much because I like rum drinks, but I don't love them. I'm not a brandy fan, but oh my goodness is this good. Even mixed. Okay, this is delicious. It tastes kind of like one of those tropical fruit cups that you have in your lunchbox as a kid, but with a lot more uh, alcohol. <laughs> I'm really tasting the banana flavor, which I think is why I love it so much. I love banana flavored stuff, and it tastes like real banana, not like fake Laffy Taffy banana. Um, I'm tasting the rum for sure, and I think I'm getting a hint of that blackberry brandy just on the end. Super refreshing, definitely on the sweet side, but it's not too sweet. I don't like an overly sweet drink, and this one is not overly sweet. This is like the ideal pool drink. I was like expecting not to like this and I am shocked. I typically don't love the pool drinks at Disney World and I love this. So, wow. 
Man, maybe I'm hanging out at the Wave Makers bar all day. All right, well, that was fantastic. All right, I opted for a burger, but interestingly, I'm getting a turkey burger because it has cranberry mayo, Swiss cheese, and apple slaw. That sounds really good. Uh, also, all burgers come with a choice of french fries, sweet fries, uh, fruit, or side salad. All right, here's my turkey burger. Um, it's on the small side, but it was made fresh to order. I watched them make it in the kitchen, literally. So I'm really excited with melty cheese and the slaw in there. Uh, then I've also got my fries, acquired condiments. But burger time, let's try it out. I'm gonna try it without anything first. It has uh, the cranberry mayo on it, so maybe that'll be enough. I'm one of those people that eats burgers upside down. If you are too, let me know. Once again, way better than I was expecting. I mean, the patty, I think, is a frozen turkey patty, but you can barely tell. I absolutely love the cranberry mayo. It adds the perfect, like, sweetness to it. And the apple slaw has a nice tartness. Overall, it's a pretty sweet burger. Uh, it's a solid portion, although I will say, like, if you're a really big eater, you might, you know, this might not be the biggest lunch portion for you, but I'm actually really a fan. I'm really surprised. And, of course, we can't fully judge somewhere until we've had the fries. They're, like, chunkier, like, steak frites style, but crispy. They're definitely on the softer side. They have a nice crisp on the outside, but they're very, very soft on the inside, and the soft outweighs the crisp. They are, however, like very salty in a way that's good for fries. Like if it were any other food item, it wouldn't be good for it to be this salty, but these are. Not the best fries I've had, but I'm certainly not mad at them. Uh, but lunch is done, and uh, I think I'm gonna head back up to the room, get a little work done, but I will see you in just like a half a second for you to talk about the pros and cons, and maybe try out that lounge too. The lounge should be open downstairs, and what better place to go at sunset than Sunset Lounge? So I think we're gonna go ahead and downstairs and check that out. We are doing something a little special for dinner, but as I walked by, I did notice some of the offerings had changed in here, so I wanted to swing in. So one, there are some pasta offerings that were not available earlier, which is pretty cool. Burgers and sandwiches are still there. Hot sandwiches are still there. There's some entrees. There's a snapper entree, ooh, with couscous and grilled veggies. Honey garlic chicken with rice and broccoli. Some more full entrees here. And then over here, there is a create your own pasta bowl option, which is really cool. Um, <laughs> this is gonna sound bad, but that really reminds me of when I was in college. We had like a create your own pasta bowl station. I don't know, I really liked it a lot. Uh, it's really a little better here than in my college dining hall, but still, pretty cool. Uh, we are headed on to Sunset Lounge. Now that Sunset Lounge is open, it's got sports games playing, so there's something specific you want to watch, you can come on down here and see if they're playing it or ask them if they can play it. Um, it's also not super crowded, surprisingly. It is a Monday night, I guess, and people are probably still at the theme parks, but I'm gonna grab a little drink. All right, so for my drink, I did go with the Endless Summer Lemonade, which is Tito's Handmade Vodka, Time Infusion, and Effervescent Fever Tree Sparkling Lemon Tonic. Of course, I had to get this because it is named for the hotel, so I'm pretty excited to try it. I also got a water from Starbucks because Starbucks filters their water and it doesn't taste like Florida water. Just a little pro tip. You do have to wait in line for it, but my opinion worth it. Also, there was no wine. Cheers. All right. I think you need to be a tonic fan to enjoy this. That lemon tonic is the most strong flavor, despite the fact that he put very little in actually, but I think it's just amplified by a lot of the other lemon flavors. It's super lemony. It honestly reminds me of like a fresh lemonade, like an actually just squeezed lemonade where you mix the sugar in and maybe didn't get quite enough sugar in there. Along with those like kind of sharper, bubblier flavors from the tonic. I'm a fan of this. It's actually on the light side um, and it's got really great lemon flavor. I don't think it's for everybody just because it is so lemony and it's not actually overly sweet. But if that, what I'm describing sounds like your jam, uh, it's a really solid drink and it's made with Tito's, which I think is a great kind of middle of the road vodka, so um, will work for me. All right, have my lounge drink. Um, and now we're gonna do something special for dinner and talk a little bit about if this hotel is worth it. <laughs> I'm ordering pizza or fried chicken to the room. I haven't decided what I'm gonna get yet, but there's in-room pizza delivery until midnight. The phone even has a pizza button. So gotta press that. <laughs> room service ordered. The room service menu is limited. There's pizza, um, boneless wings and salads and things like that, but mostly pizza. You can get like beers or bottles of wine brought up as well. Um, I went ahead and got a cheese pizza uh, and a salad because I kept watching people walk by with Caesar salad and I was jealous. So that's ordered. Uh, he said at the latest it'll be 45 minutes, which is great. Um, so for now, I think we should talk about if this hotel is worth it or not. So to talk about if this hotel is worth it, we need to talk about the perks first. 
So there are a few universal specific perks that come with staying at a universal resort hotel. The biggest of which in my opinion is early theme park entry to the wizarding world of Harry Potter. On select days, there is an hour of early theme park entry that gets you into that land. Sometimes other lands are included. Go ahead and check online in advance, but usually the best way to use it is to ride Hagrid's before those crowds get in. There's also free and easy transportation around Universal. Those buses do come to this hotel every 10 minutes. Super easy to get to Volcano Bay and City Walk and the parks. The other two smaller things is that you can get that resort-wide purchase authorization on your hotel key, and you can do purchase delivery of certain things that you buy in the parks. Pros-wise, the first one is going to be value. I think that this hotel is an incredible value for the amount that you're paying, the perks that you're getting, the amount of space in the family suites. I think it's an incredible value as theme park area hotels go. Another pro is the room size. This room is huge. Even the standard rooms are a solid size. And with that value, that's just not something you always expect. The fact that you can get a family suite that sleeps six adults comfortably for an actual affordable price is just something that I think is really not something we can overlook as a massive pro. We've also got to talk about the amenities and perks. The theme park perks that I just listed are definitely a pro. And there's also two huge pools, two pool bars, a lounge in the lobby, a Starbucks in the lobby, a full Universal Studios store, and a pretty tasty restaurant and a room service offering. These are the kind of things that I would not expect to see at a Disney World value hotel. So if you are comparing staying at Universal to staying at Disney, that might be something to keep in mind. Cons wise, certainly the location. So one, if you are just doing Universal centric trip, these hotels are located a little bit further from the theme parks than some of the more expensive hotels. Um, those bus rides are gonna take a little bit longer. It's not exactly walkable. We're actually across the highway, over the highway, but we are across the highway. It's a little difficult to get over there. Um, so we'll see just how long it takes. I don't think it's gonna be too wild, but it's certainly not the prime location as Universal hotels go. Beyond that, if you are planning on going over to Disney, if you're gonna spend more of your time at Disney versus Universal, then a Universal hotel the savings might not make that worth it depending on how you are traveling. Do you have your own car? That kind of thing. Um, but if you're staying in Universal, it's still a relatively good location. It's just not the best compared to Universal hotels. This hotel is also large. It's very, very big. There's a lot of people here. That means the pools can get busy. The dining hall can get busy. The lounge can get busy. The lobby has been slammed pretty much all day with people checking in. And honestly, the biggest con for me has been the elevators. One of the elevators in my tower is down, so there are only three elevators servicing this tower, and it has been slammed all day. I've had to wait for like a second elevator to come every time I try to take the elevator. So it's definitely busy. I've seen cheer groups coming through. We know that from the All-Stars at Disney. Um, it's definitely been on the noisy side in some of the common areas. I will say, I can hear a little noise in my hotel room. When I took my nap earlier, I heard some things, but not enough to wake me up and certainly not that much because it is interior hallways. Um, so it's a lot more like a standard hotel. Also interior hallways is not something you typically see at values at Disney World at all. None of the values have interior hallways. They're all external. The final con is gonna be that the bus is the only mode of transportation. Some universal hotels do have access to boats. You know I love a boat. I also think taking a boat to universal theme parks in the morning is a lot more relaxing. It also gets you a little closer to the theme parks than the buses do. Um, and some hotels it's easy to walk from and this one, that's just not the case. So that's a little bit of a con is that it doesn't have the best transportation as the hotels go. Overall, usually when I answer the question of is it worth it when I'm talking about a hotel, I say it depends. And that is true here, but I'm a lot more inclined to say yes to this hotel than I typically am at Disney. It just feels a lot more fairly priced for what you're getting compared to some Disney hotels. And I think that that's something that like, we gotta talk about the fact that you would actually pay a regular hotel rate and be able to stay in a regular hotel room with theme park perks or stay in a six bed family suite for a rate that is less than any family suite in Disney World. That's something that's like really awesome to me. Um, my parents are coming to visit soon and I did encourage them to stay at Universal just because I think it's more like price friendly. And if you do have a car or you rent a car, you can stay here and still go to Disney. You just have that little bit of commute in the mornings. So if that's, if a little bit of a commute to Disney doesn't bother you and you are going to both Disney and Universal, maybe consider staying at Universal this time instead of staying in the Disney bubble. Could be, could be 
could be nice, could save you some money, could still be a great stay. And if you are just staying in the Universal Bubble, I think it's definitely worth it. There are certainly hotels around this area, but most of them are similarly priced. Uh, we're right by International Drive, which is a big touristy area, so most of the hotels around here are gonna have about the same price as this. If I was between staying on property at Universal and staying just off property, I would stay on property at Universal. The amenities are great, the perks are great, um, and I really like this room, and I really like the prices. I'm just thinking about how, like, if six friends wanted to come stay in this room, you could split $200 six ways. And what is that? If you put six adults in this room and everyone was splitting it equally, it would be $30 a night. I don't know, man. I don't know. And for a family, it's actually affordable. I'm, I'm very impressed with this. And I had a very good nap. So I think it's important that we try extended bed science after I get my pizza. All right, food has arrived. We've got cheese pizza, Caesar salad. It is a 10 inch pizza, so I would say shareable, but I'm alone and I'm gonna eat the whole thing and I can't be stopped. I also got a Bud Light just cause a uh, good night pizza and beer. Sounds good to me. Also in the room service bag, they brought along like a dining pack basically, um, plus one single paper plate. They did ask me how many people were dining. And here's my Caesar dressing. It is Ken's. A classic. And the silverware in it has some Parmesan cheese and some crushed, oh no, some crushed red pepper too. Theme park pizza, not typically the best. Um, so this I'm really curious about. It actually, I mean, it looks pretty good. It doesn't look show stopping or anything like that. I don't know, we'll see. This is pretty good. Um, I gotta try the bones. I would say that this is a cut above like Disney puff pizza or like, um, you know, like, school pizza it's a couple cuts about school pizza um it's definitely nothing show-stopping if you want really really good pizza just order a delivery you can do that order a delivery to your hotel um i am a fan of this though i think after a long theme park day this would be really killer especially if you're a family to be able to just get room service and i think things just taste better in your hotel room when you don't have to walk and go get them it's also higher quality cheese look at this now that's a cheese bowl. Gotta do a salad shake. I hope it's sealed. This is nerve wracking. All right, trying out the Caesar salad. Gonna get a little bit of everything. Looks pretty basic, but there's nothing wrong with a basic Caesar salad. No, my crouton. Yeah, it's a pretty basic Caesar salad. The lettuce is nice and crunchy. There's Parmesan cheese. The croutons aren't quite as crunchy as I like them. They're a little soft, um, but Ken's Caesar dressing is good. It's not great. It's Ken's Caesar dressing. You've had it. We've all had it. That's like a universal human experience. I'm not gonna finish this pizza tonight and I'm gonna have cold pizza for breakfast. I'm so excited about it. But that is our first day at Dockside. We'll wake up tomorrow. We'll talk about how the beds are and we'll head on over to the park. So we'll see how long that takes and what that looks like. So far, so good. So I'm gonna finish my pizza, digest and watch the Food Network for a while. And I'll see you tomorrow. Good night. Good morning. Okay, obviously I'm up and at them. Had a really good night's sleep. Uh, I will say the building's windows are lit. So I slept in one of the beds that was close to a window and I like to sleep with just the privacy curtains so that I get sun in the morning to help me wake up. And I had a little bit of issue falling asleep with the lights out the window. So you might have to use the blackout curtains, but it wasn't too bad. Check out, it's at 11 a.m. But as you can probably tell, it's a lot earlier than that. That's because I'm headed to Universal today, baby meeting Emma to film a video. So I'm gonna go drop my stuff off at Bell Services, and then hop on one of these buses and see how long it takes us to get to the theme park. The Starbucks line is certainly long. Uh, it's about 7.30. I am headed to early entry. It's one of my hotel perks, but I also have access to that as uh, an annual pass holder. But if you stay here, you can get early entry too. I'm telling you, it's awesome. Tons of buses are out, so I was able to hop on the first one. I know this says Volcano Bay. I promise it's the right bus I asked. Truly six minutes, a six minute bus ride. I walked right up to a bus. Again, they're, they're every 10 minutes. Mine left right on the 40, so I think it's possible that for, like they leave on the 10 minutes, uh, but that could get wonky, so don't quote me on that. But I'm, I'm walking up to City Walk right now. I'll go straight up to security, which I'm not gonna film, um, but that's a benefit of Universal being a lot smaller is that it's a lot easier to get around, just six minutes from the hotel. I am at City Walk, of course. Now, that's one thing to know is that the buses for the Universal Orlando Resorts do drop you at City Walk, so you're actually still a little bit of a walk from the park gates. There are some more expensive hotels that'll drop you a lot closer to the park gates with their modes of transportation. And we will certainly check that out if you guys wanna see me review 
more Universal Orlando resorts, just let me know. I'd be happy to. I had such a great time and endless summer. I think we should definitely check out the rest of them to see what's worth the stay, what's worth the spend when you're headed to Universal Orlando. Guess who I found? Me. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we are headed in to film a heart rate challenge today. I've never done one of these. Emma's just becoming an old pro at them. No, I'm not. <laughs> anyway, that's coming to the channel, so keep an eye out for that. But uh, we're headed into Universal. I had a great time at Endless Summer. If you like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. And now go watch my tour of Disney's Fort Wilderness Resort and Campground. See you there.